Hello and welcome to Play PKN, the weekly video bulletin of the top news stories on PKN Packaging News, Australia's media hub for the packaging industry. I'm PKN's publisher, Lindy Hewson, and this week's episode is brought to you once again by Ball and Doggett, Australia's largest distributor of printable materials for packaging and the creator of the Ecoporium by Ball and Doggett platform which is set to deliver an industry-first live experience at Apex 2024, as announced this week. Then making news this week in a strategic move aimed at strengthening the Australian and New Zealand packaging sector, Australian Packaging Covenant Organisation and the Australian Institute of Packaging, that's APCO and the AIP, have signed an agreement to collaborate to align sustainable packaging practices throughout the industry and improve packaging and sustainability knowledge in the Australia-New Zealand region. The partnership will provide proof points for sustainability professionals regarding their packaging and sustainability credentials. This will be achieved through AIP's facilitation and delivery of APCO-focused educational courses, which will be available to industry in 2024. So that's really good news. Now, the focus of the courses is on uplifting skill levels and recognizing knowledge in APCO and packaging sustainability-related topics, such as the Australasian Recycling Label, Label Program, that's the ARL. Now, next up, as part of the ACCC's clampdown on greenwashing, yogurt manufacturer Moo Premium Foods will be changing the claims on its packaging. The ACCC has accepted a court-enforceable undertaking from Moo following an investigation into its 100% ocean plastic representations on its yogurt packaging website and social media pages. Now, between at least November 2021 and the date of this recent undertaking, Moo claimed that its yoga tubs were made from 100% ocean plastic, which the ACCC was concerned gave the impression that they were made from plastic waste collected directly from the ocean, which was not the case. While Moo included disclaimers on the top and back of the packaging, the ACCC considered that this was insufficient to overcome the headline representation of 100% ocean plastic. Now, Moo has admitted in the undertaking that it has given to the ACCC that the 100% ocean plastic representations likely did contravene the Australian consumer law, which prohibits false or misleading representations. ACCC Commissioner Liza Carver said the investigation had revealed that the plastic resin used in the manufacture of Moo's yogurt packaging was in fact collected from coastal areas in Malaysia and not directly from the ocean. So, Moo will be changing its packaging to reflect the statement, ocean-bound packaging. That's um, something to think about when it comes to note noting what your claims are for greenwashing purposes. Wellman Packaging, meanwhile, is marking 50 years in business this month, and you can read the in-depth company profile on this rigid plastic specialist in our latest issue. Wellman currently finds itself third in the New South Wales bottle and preform market for FMCG packaging behind Vizzy and Pact Group. The PKN team congratulates Wellman Packaging on achieving this significant milestone. And then in some more Wellman news, the company has collaborated with Mars Food and Nutrition Australia to evolve its Master Foods squeezy sauce bottles towards a more sustainable future. The new-to-market Master Foods sauce bottles, designed by industrial designer Brad Stebbing of Crafted Design, make use of Wellman PET technology that will see the reduction of virgin plastic by 18%. This change will help to cut Mars Food and Nutrition Australia's virgin plastic use by 12.7 tonnes in 2024, with a view to further reductions in the future. Congratulations, Mars Food and Wellman. Then we check in with Tetra Pak, who has been awarded the Swedish-Australian Chamber of Commerce 2023 Excellence in Partnership and Collaboration Award, along with its partner SaveBoard, recognising their joint contribution to developing a recycling solution for cardboard beverage containers. Still in the world of beverage recycling, environmental groups, along with recycling and waste management bodies, are calling on states and territories to follow Queensland's example in including wine and spirit bottles in container deposit schemes. WA, South Australia and New South Wales are reportedly investigating a joint decision to include, include these bottles in their CDS. The Australian Council of Recycling, the Boomerang Alliance and the Waste Management and Resource Recovery Association Association of Australia have called for implementation by the three states by mid-2024. 
And finally, in some last bit of sustainability news, Detmold Group says it's increasing its environmental and sustainability focus with the first of its multiple facilities flicking the switch to solar energy. The group says it has made a commitment to introduce solar energy to at least one new facility each year for the next three years. This month, it has installed its first 99 kilowatt 243 panel system at its Regency Park facility using PV modules from Australian solar manufacturer Tindo Solar. And just a reminder, PKN's latest issue is now out and befitting what has been a huge year for packaging innovation, sustainability and investment, this issue is jam-packed with news and in-depth features, including all the latest developments in circular economy, packaging innovation, food and beverage packaging and design, plus our reports on Pack Expo and Label Expo. Well, that's all from me this week. For more on these and other stories, do head over to our website straight away, packagingnews.com.au. Thank you, as ever, for watching.